we're below supply right now on the, on the weekly on the queues. When you're below supply, it's not buy the F and dip. It's buy the dip and hope to God that's actually the low of the whole, the whole range. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Monday edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing okay. So, fair question. And, you know, I, I, I posted this question on, um, on Twitter, I believe. So, was the market up or down today, right? So, if, if you had, you know, if I put in 100 people in a room and I split them up, right? And I completely split them up and I completely introduced them myself as a non-biased uh, observer of what is happening in the market with no bias opinion, very, very objective. I, I probably would have to say 50 people would say the market was up today and 50 people uh, would say the market is down today. And if you look at the indexes, and I've been saying this for years and years, that indexes are just a guide, okay? It's not going to define us, it's not gonna define our day. It's not going to put extra zeros in, in our uh, in our bank accounts. It means absolutely nothing. It's a roadmap. Uh, it is an area that we can have an opinion based on uh, macro sentiment, and then kind of you know use our process uh, as a backstop to kind of get us from point A to point B. And today was a perfect example of what we've been seeing in the market now for quite a while. Okay, uh, financials again. We talked about interest rates uh, ticking up. Financials continue to be incredibly strong. And again, we'll, we'll get to the, the pivots in a second. Uh, MasterCard, very, very strong. Visa, very, very strong. You know, you look at all these names, uh, they've been kind of moving up the Bank of America, the city banks and all, and the money has been constantly, like literally constantly sucked out of this tape. Anything technology, anything growth, anything uh, that had a big move this year. And the cycle continues over and over and over again. And when you look at the scoreboard, you'll probably see one of the biggest disconnects you'll see in a very, very long time that's not an earnings driven day. So, for example, I could see if like Apple on earnings was down like 25 percent. I could see the Nasdaq getting absolutely destroyed. Right. I could see a three, four hundred point move on the Nasdaq composite. The same way if Boeing was up like 20 points, 25 points, I can see the Dow being up three, 400 points. Because again, at the end of the day, the Dow is only 30 stocks. It's, it's not like a mass universe that's driving up uh, the, for, the forces of good and evil. It's only 30 stocks. So what we saw today was definitely one of the biggest non-catalysts. And again, somebody could turn around and say, well, they did approve the whole stimulus. But I mean, every, I think everybody, uh, I think everybody kind of expected that. So I, I kind of want to kind of brush that off. But you saw the Dow at some point, it was up 600 points today, which, which was very, very impressive. Uh, and it, again, it did drive some names to the upside. Matter of fact, my first trade of the day was Tesla, right? It was Tesla out of a sneaky, pat, uh, sneaky pivot to the upside, which turned out to be very, very well. And then obviously later it crackled with everything else that gave another pivot to the downside. But taking the pivots aside, you really have to, to wonder what is going to happen next big picture. And the question is, does the market, right? And the word market is now is very, very subjective. If you ask me what the market did today, I'll say, well, the market got killed today. You know, the Dow, excuse me, the Nasdaq was down nearly 400 points. You turn to somebody who's, who's been trading and holding, uh, investing, especially in uh, interest rate sensitive names like the financial say, well, the market is great. The market is fantastic. Look what you know what the banks are doing. Look what the credit card companies are doing. That you know, if we are having an improved economy, and again, that's a great discussion for another uh, another time. You know, they're going to have to raise rates. Who benefits from raising rates? Obviously, financials. So you know, there is definitely two camps, and there is a, a great conversation and a great uh, format of of discussing what the market did today. But if you do believe in the active trader, and you do believe in the the day to day. Uh, winning of the interval, winning of the day, identifying where the points of interest are, it's very, very tough to argue that we've been in a really ugly sell cycle for a very, very long time. And again, this is not the first day I woke up today and say, hey, by the way, the markets, you know, the technology names stink. They do. They're terrible. But they've been going down for a very, very long time. I think a lot of people 
miss this whole uh, whole um, you know really really big ugly decline because there's been so much aggression on speculation days. For example, so today, if you turn around and say, wow, I didn't even notice. I can't believe the market was even down. Look what GameStop did, did today. And they're not wrong, right? Look, GameStop went nuts today. A, a name like EXPR and all these meme names, right? So, you know, all these meme names, uh, EXPR and AMC, which AMC I kind of actually like for tomorrow, if it actually confirms this channel here. It actually got rejected a few times. Again, I'm not focusing on it tomorrow. I'm still very, very sell biased. But I think a lot of people miss the sell off in the overall uh, in the overall tech space because there has been no fear and there has been uh, areas of the market that people are still chasing and chasing very, very aggressively. But the big picture is kind of what we want to talk about tonight. And you know, we saw a lot of really aggressive, out of the money, near term put buying today. Uh, at some point in the morning, and again, this is when, when the market was still on the market, when the NASDAQ was still relatively holding up. Some names, you know, a little weak, but nothing crazy. We saw big out of the money uh, put buyers coming in on NVIDIA, on Apple, uh, on Tesla, right? They were coming for the 550 weekly puts very, very aggressively. So forth, so, so forth and so on. And, you know, somebody turned to me and said, well, that has to be the bottom. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Again, we're, we're talking about bottoms, which is absolutely ridiculous. Remember, the most aggressive market of all time was the internet craze. This is 1B. Okay, granted, this is definitely 1B. If you look at the NASDAQ 100 chart, right, you look at the Qs, and number one, Friday's low becomes a very, very point, big point of reference, maybe even uh, gets tested tomorrow. But number one, this is the five day moving average. We've been watching this broadcast for a very long time. You kind of know the importance of it. And we kind of know what we talked about on the weekend video that quote unquote, we should have gotten a dead cat bounce. Again, I don't look at the NASDAQ 100, you know, the NASDAQ composite down 300 points is a dead cat bounce. You, you know, again, looks good on paper. Hey, great call, Dan, the market's up 300. No, 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 no. The market I trade was down a lot, okay? And the reason it was down a lot, it keeps on getting rejected over and over again at the five-day moving average. Again, you could just look with your, with your own eyes. Five-day rejected, five-day rejected, five-day rejected, five-day rejected, five-day rejected, five-day rejected, five-day rejected. And today, it got, again, got rejected on the five-day moving average. And it's very, very important to understand, guys. Even if you have a dead cat bounce day, that which we had on Friday, you can make an argument. A lot of names got murdered throughout the week. So the market, quote unquote, was oversold. So I get it, right? There was a dead cat bounce. It's all gravy. But if, if the market can't sustain and reclaim those next levels, and we talked about those levels of nausea, then it doesn't become the bulls failed. It becomes a continuation of when bulls failed on top of here and started losing levels over and over and over again. And that first day that we closed below the 50 day moving average, that was the sell signal, right? That was the time that, and again, we, if, you, if you want in your, uh, an investor in the markets and you believe in, in the long-term you know, bull market perspective, then again, we're not talking to you, but we identified levels that you could have taken, per, you, know, you could have taken precaution, you could have taken action, whether it's, um, whether it's hedging your portfolio, uh, getting out of the market or being a little bit more proactive on levels that if they did confirm, you, there wasn't a surprise. And now it's kind of a little bit too late. So now you're really in the crosshairs of what's going on. So before somebody could turn around and say that was the bottom of the market, understand we're only been going down for three weeks. That's number one. And number two, if you look at the weekly, right, weekly trend line of what is going on here, you could see here now this is the first close behind this weekly trend line that started a long, long time ago. Okay, that's number one. So if we start confirming this candle here, which was Friday's low, look how much room you have, right? Yeah, there's about 20 points of downside. Again, there's no fear mongering here. There's, I'm not a bear and I keep on reiterating that every single video because a lot of people are sitting there and, and hoping that God, their, their portfolio bounces back, their stocks and bounce back. And again, during the internet craze, during the dot com bubble, you could hear it with, it's the same conversation, but 20 years ago. Cisco was at 150, there's no way it gets below 120. At 100, it's a gift. How can the stock be 50? Oh my God, you guys are giving away your shares. At $20, this is a gift from God. How can you not get long? Yada, yada, yada. Cisco goes down to like $8, $9 uh, during, you know, during the middle of uh, the mortgage crisis. So there, there is a lot of room down. And, and, and again, I, I completely understand the whole theory of buy the dip. And I, and I reiterated the point 
uh, during um, the weekend update that you know the buy the dip theory it's it's a great concept okay and it works really really well when you have a euphoric linear bull market it is these are facts okay because strong stocks when they come back into rising support they're probably going to bounce when stocks are below supply and that's where we are right now look at look at it I mean, you can see what your eyes we're below supply right now on the, on the weekly on the queues when you're below supply it's not buy the f and dip it's buy the dip and hope to god that's actually the low of, of the whole the whole range and hopes and prayers you know it's just it's just not a it's not a great way to manage your money um and again you don't have to be a day-to-day -day participant in the market but at least understand where we are right now if you if you know, again if you believe that your eyeballs are always going to tell you the truth right we held the bottom of the range here we bounced we held the bottom of the range here we bounced right this is the first close behind this whole rising wedge so again you could take you know you could say hey, look this guy dan's a complete idiot and i am so it's your choice to kind of decide what you want to do with your portfolio what you want to do with your game plan but number one there are very limited amount of things you can buy when stocks are below supply and the one thing that we've constantly consistently talked about uh in a market that is under supply is you never know where your rally is going to stop because you have no safety net there is no you know there is no area of defined risk you can take you could take the previous day's low but the previous day's low could be 15 20 dollars lower if you're willing to take that risk well then you're willing to take that risk so it, it's very very important to kind of understand where we are is look is this is it possible that last friday's low gets tested we hold and we go back higher everything is possible everything's on the table but as we say every single day it's not fear mongering it's not just the same way as the market's going up i have no interest in shorting stocks now the market's going down it's really really tough to convince me uh, to buy stocks for more than a rental for one uh for one big push uh, into a supply zone so going into tomorrow I mean look I do have long setups that I do like you know maybe AMC wakes up right maybe this AMC wakes up again GameStop woke up maybe this AMC wakes up tomorrow right if it takes out this whole channel here it's got rejected three times maybe it rallies uh name like uh CHS right this little you know Chico's right of all things if Chico's wakes up and starts confirming today's highs maybe this thing goes back higher right maybe it's one of these uh, quote unquote cold stocks look at Macy's right you know there are some longs in this market that look pretty good Macy's got above this whole range here and if it starts confirming today's price action maybe it goes higher as well but then at the other side let I me mean, look at Apple right look at Apple is you know it broke down Friday's low broke down this whole range uh look at Netflix right it's breaking down it starts confirming this whole macro range look how much room it has Nvidia got destroyed again today right destroyed uh Tesla there was a you know there was a really good move to the upside today and there was a really good move to the downside today again look if Tesla starts confirming this room look how much room you have down so there are areas that you can hide in this tape both long and especially on short but it, again folks it, again you don't need to take my you know my word for it you know if if things start to pull and the Nasdaq starts pulling down the Dow there will be no place to hide and it's very very important that you understand that history is real this is exactly what happened to us uh, during the dot-com bubble we didn't believe the market could come in for more than a week haha <laughs> they're bull you know everybody's crazy just buy the dip buy the dip that's all we knew buy the dip overnight buy the dip overnight and eventually that stopped and it was over and we got absolutely massacred with at with no with zero explanation of how to you know manufacture runs at least for the next three to five years it was completely uh re you know re um uh what's the word I'm looking for uh re resurrecting our careers right resurrecting our careers and, and hoping for the best so let's talk about today's pivots um pretty aggressive stuff here both long and short uh Facebook which was and again this was kind of the first clue today Facebook was the strongest stock on Friday never rallied today uh this was definitely definitely the move I mean at least the first move of the day was great uh Tesla 599 600 needs to build and I said cash flow only I didn't think it was going to stretch as much as it did but here was the pivot here on on uh, net on excuse me on Tesla right so here is the whole you see this whole channel here here's the whole channel here sneaky areas here 598 599 I actually bought it above here which was this 60 606 range I paid 609 it went straight into this channel here right into supply into the 620s really really aggressive move congratulations for all you guys uh who took it uh REI never made it here 
Uh, Google, again, not a big move at all. It, it pivoted above 2107, went up about seven points and got destroyed with everything else. Uh, FISV, 12050, 121 needs to build, right? Here is FISV, right? So 121, right? So this whole 121, uh, 120 and a half, 121, really nice move here. Almost went to 124, actually held up uh, very, very well. Uh, LUMN 14 needs to build. Here was uh, LUMN, right? Really nice move here. Uh, traded almost to the 1450. Still looks higher. I don't know what the hell this thing does, but uh, it definitely looks uh, good for uh, continue for tomorrow. So beautiful move. A absolutely beautiful move uh, on Tesla to the upside. Uh, Qs, again, this was the big macro area. And if the bulls fail, da, 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 they failed that area. That's why the market got pulled. Uh, NVIDIA completely destroyed. 485, if it builds below, can flush. Here was NVIDIA, just absolutely manslaughtered, like really manslaughtered. Closed literally at the lows of the day, uh, 462. I still like it lower for uh, tomorrow. Uh, NVIDIA got crushed. Uh, AUVI never got there. Uh, FISV take on the web. So yeah, two financials did incredibly well today. Uh, MasterCard 369. Uh, needs to build to the upside. Here's MasterCard. Here's the 369 and traded, went to 382, big, big move there. Again, interest rates, they're, they're definitely benefiting from that. Uh, Visa, 220.70, 221 needs to build. Here was Visa, right? 221, went to uh, 226. So big move in the financials, some, some really good value today. Um, you, you know, it took a while to get there but really good value. Again, I like AMC. If it starts building above this area, it can go. Uh, and then here's and then here's Tesla. Uh, 578 held three times on the 60 minute. Again, we don't care which side the pivots are going, as long as they're going with, with measured potential. Uh, there's a little bit more support, 576. If it starts cracking and the buyer came in for the 550 weekly puts, can really flush the 566 support. And here was Tesla just got just destroyed, right? Here's, here's the... 578, right? Here's the 578, right? 578, 578, 578, 578. It took out 578, went right to uh, the 565, 566 area. And this thing looks lower for tomorrow. It starts confirming this 150-day moving average. Then it's going to test uh, last Friday's low. So, you know, good stuff. Good good stuff. You, again, you have, to be, uh, you have to be really, really patient in the market. But there's really good areas that you can take advantage of. And what we've seen today, there, there are places that you can hide, but the overall sentiment continues to be on the sell side. Guys, stay safe. Trust technical analysis. You don't need to trade every single day if you are uncomfortable. But the most important part is look at the market. Embrace the market you have, not the market you want or not the market that we had two weeks ago. Guys, God bless. I'll see you on the field tomorrow.